What is the experience of attending one's own funeral after being reborn? She has regenerated her arrogant and infamous little cousin. Before his rebirth, the original owner relentlessly pursued his fiancée A.E. from the central air conditioning system. After being reborn, my fiancé A. hugged the woman and said, I only treat her like a younger sister. The descendants of Su Tai didn't speak much harshly, and an arrow shot him wet in the crotch and legs. She was divorced four times a year, to the point where the crowd mocked her. No one dared to marry her. Unexpectedly, she turned around and married the renowned General Chu. The young man, dressed in a stunning white horse and red clothes, was stunned by her talent. She played gongs and drums to welcome her marriage, and she was radiant with splendor and beautiful scenery. She was envious of everyone. Someone said sourly. Soon she will be despised by the ghost general and expelled from the mansion with a divorce letter. Everyone agreed. That is, whoever marries her will have a restless house. Later the servant rushed in panic and said, It's not good. Madam and young madam got into an argument in the room and even smashed things. Everyone gathered in the front row, holding melon seeds. The general gave a faint smile and said, It's okay, the items in the room are too old, they should be renewed. Everyone. At night, holding the delicate white jade hand of madam, she applied shark man cream. Madam will pick a soft one next time to avoid hurting her hand. The servant ran over in panic again. No good. Madam and Miss are fighting in the courtyard. Everyone crowded in the front row and cut the melons well. The general smiled calmly and said, It's okay, it's just a martial arts competition. Everyone. Seeing his sister with scars all over her body, the general spoke earnestly and said, If you don't listen to your brother, you will suffer a loss in front of you. Sister. Is this still my own brother? The people of the entire imperial capital eagerly awaited his retirement from the Shen Xing Song, and after twenty years of waiting, the two still loved each other as before. Everyone sighed. The dog in the imperial capital was stretched to death, and these two are not innocent. Keywords of the novel After retiring, the Empress Dowager is spoiled by powerful officials without a pop dot up window. After retiring, the Empress Dowager is spoiled by powerful officials. Download the complete text. After retiring, the Empress Dowager is spoiled by powerful officials. Latest chapter reading. Chapter 1. Previous Dust. You are listening at novelfull.audio. The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 2. Rebirth. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 2 Rebirth The Empress Dowager has passed away. The sound of the bell was deep and deep, as if it were a mournful cry. It resounded throughout the entire imperial capital, for a whole thirty thousand times, each time as if knocking on the hearts of the people. For a moment, the whole country mourned, the heavens wanted to shed tears, the wind was crying, and all things in heaven and earth were in sorrow. The people kneeling by the street gradually looked up. The first snow of this year came particularly early and came with a fierce force, like torn cotton wool, covering everything at a rapid speed, quickly turning into a vast expanse of white. However, as the chill surged, no one stood up to hide from the snow. The heavy snowfall continued for a moment, and it rained all night. The imperial capital was solemn and quiet, completely free from the hustle and bustle of the past, a luxurious carriage in the color of crabapple followed the endless procession of aristocratic families, slowly heading towards the palace, appearing particularly dazzling. The people kneeling on both sides of the long street lowered their heads and whispered, whose carriage is that? The Empress Dowager passed away, and the officials of the people took off their hats, tassels, and plain robes. The entire Qingyuan kingdom must not have seen any bright colors. How could it still use a red curtain? This is a great disrespect to the Empress Dowager. Yeah, why didn't anyone care about it? And let it appear on the street. That's Shenxingda's carriage, the little cousin of the Empress Dowager. 
She's used to being arrogant and domineering, so no one dares to manage it. Normally, relying on the power of the Empress Dowager, indulging in barbarism is enough. Now that the Empress Dowager has passed away, she has not changed her previous style at all, still extravagant and promiscuous. How can she live up to the wise sage? He was already immersed in grief and had nowhere to vent his resentment. He was so angry that he wanted to rush forward and smash the incompatible carriage. The group of bloody men kneeling beside them also stared fiercely at the carriage, because this was a great disrespect to Saint Sue. The appearance of such a carriage on the long street is bound to provoke public anger. The woman next to him grabbed him and said, You're not going to die. Even if she shouldn't have done it, there will be someone to teach her a lesson. It's not like us ordinary people trying to force ourselves, be careful not to get angry. Shun Shinga, the little cousin of a saint in vain. It's not an exaggeration to say she's a beast, someone whispered and cursed. If you do evil deeds, there will be a day to end. At this moment, in the luxurious carriage, there lay a young girl in her twenties, dressed in a cloud-embroidered long skirt with begonia flowers embroidered on the collar, cuffs, and hem. She was in her prime, with her eyebrows and eyes still growing, but she could already catch a glimpse of the beautiful and watery embryo. Her figure was even more petite with the interweaving of crabapple-colored embroidery and orchid cape, and the white rabbit hair on her cheeks complemented her skin like a curd. She just closed her eyes tightly, her thick curled eyelashes remained motionless, her face pale to the point of no blood, not as if she had fallen asleep, but as if she had already passed away. Mississippi, whispered the maid in an emerald green robe who was also in the carriage. No one answered. She has been shouting for half an hour, if she could wake up, she should have woken up long ago. Suddenly, a thunderbolt rang out in the dark sky, and the pale lightning happened to strike the luxurious carriage on the long street. The horse was startled, its front hooves flying, and it was about to lose control and collide with the carriage ahead. Fortunately, the groom was experienced enough to stand up and tighten the reins of the horse, but he managed to control the frightened horse. However, the carriage jolted and the food box in the maid's hand fell, leaving her face as pale as earth. At the same time, shake down Shinshinga lying on the soft couch. I can't even bear to see the heavens anymore, I deserve to be struck by lightning. The people kneeling on both sides of the long street were extremely relieved. We should kill the demon Shinshinga. Maybe it's already chopped to death. This kind of demon that has been harming for thousands of years will be brought to an end by heaven. If she could be as good as the Empress Dowager by a thousand, she wouldn't be despised by anyone. How can she be compared to the wise and powerful sage Su? She doesn't even deserve to lift her shoes. Ba, in the carriage, Shinshinga fell to the ground with a thud. The severe pain in her brain made her suddenly open her eyes and see the top of the carriage inlaid with gemstones for the first time. Looking around, I saw the maid hurriedly picking up the food box on the ground. I reached out and rubbed my sore temples, only to find that my hands were delicate and flawless, and had become shorter. I was wearing a girl's brocade skirt embroidered with crabapple flowers. What's going on? How could I suddenly appear in the carriage even though I have already passed away? Ah! The maid hurriedly picked up the food box when she saw the young lady waking up and exclaimed in fear, causing the food box in her hand to fall again. The miss, why are you awake? She hurriedly picked up the food box, her eyes flickering and her face tense, as if she had seen a ghost. Mississippi. A.I. Jia is the Empress Dowager, how did she become a young lady? Which young lady is it from? After some subtle clitch A.S., Su Wunyan finally understood that she had been reborn, onto Shinshinga, the eldest daughter of the right Chancellor Shen Pingchuo, Fu four times. At this moment, Shinshinga was on his way to the palace to offer condolences, and the maid in the carriage, named Sui Qin, was Shinshinga's personal maid. The white and tender little hand lifted the blood-colored gemstone curtain, and what caught the eye were the people kneeling in the snow on the long street, with a sad expression. People of all ages, women, and children were present, 
and a thin layer of snow was piled on their gray hair, not very clear. Putting down the pearl curtain, a thin mist covered the eyes that were filled with spiritual energy. With a restrained expression and a clear understanding of the facts, Empress Dowager Su, who stood at the peak of Qing Yuan's national power and looked down on her courtiers, truly passed away. Heaven's mercy has made Su Wunyan reborn. In this life, she will cherish her body and never die young due to illness again. Don't get caught up in the struggle for imperial power again, engage in intrigues and deceit, and be bound by rules and regulations for a lifetime. In this life, she wants to enjoy a carefree and unrestrained life. Sitting solemnly on the soft couch, looking up at Sui Qing, who had gradually calmed down from her panic, she asked, Since you are going to the palace to offer condolences, why do you choose such a luxurious carriage for your trip? Sui Qing's expression stiffened slightly, and she immediately smiled and said, Miss, you forgot. Before leaving, you deliberately instructed the maidservants to prepare your favorite crabapple colored carriage, to serve you in your favorite crabapple embroidered skirt and cloak, and enter the palace to offer condolences. You said that only by making such a big fuss can the world know that your cousin, the Empress Dowager, personally went to the palace to offer condolences. I received news last night that you were constantly preparing. This morning, before everyone in the mansion had left, you set off early to enter the palace, which was enough to show your sincerity to the world. Sui Qing smiled obsequiously, her eyes filled with praise for Shen Shinga's actions. Cousin. Su Wunyan felt that the name Shen Shinga sounded a bit familiar. Now, upon careful consideration, she remembered that the youngest legitimate daughter of the Wang family, her maternal grandfather, had married into the Shen family. It was difficult for her to have children, and she gave birth to a daughter very late, which seemed to be called Shinshinga. Just for some unknown reason, did I have to be reborn into her. Since I am currently inside her body, where has she gone? Isn't it, already dead? Recalling Sui Qing's reaction when she woke up, there were already clues. Listening to Sui Qing's answer, how foolish was Shinshinga to dress up and offer condolences in the palace. Even if Shen Shinga is extremely foolish, Sui Qing, who is her personal maid, will definitely learn the rules when she enters the Prime Minister's mansion. It is impossible for her to not even understand such basic rules. So, Sui Qing deliberately concealed Shen Shinga and encouraged her to do such absurd things. At this point, the coldness in my eyes increased a bit. Sui Qing felt a chill in her heart, and for some reason, the young lady suddenly woke up, feeling as if she had changed her personality. Her words seemed to be gentle, and there was no visible change in her emotions on her face. But when those breathtaking eyes looked at him, they felt something pressing down on their chest, making them gasp for breath, and their back felt chills. The world was in great mourning, and Shinshinga actually dressed up and walked, which undoubtedly made her the target of public criticism. The people kneeling in the snow probably wish they could rush up and tear Shinshinga alive, smashing this carriage, right? Su Wunyan thought to herself. I, Su Wunyan, am not restrained by these formalities and do not care about their superficial skills. During my lifetime, I detested these formalities the most. Before my death, I issued a testament that the war would not last for nearly ten years. The population was sparse and the people of Qingyu and Kingdom did not have to follow the rule of not getting married for three years. Quietly scanning his gaze over the food box, Sui Qing was extremely nervous. Could it be related to Shinshinga's death? Rebirth within Shinshinga's body can also be considered an opportunity. The cause of Shinshinga's death must be investigated, and this grudge must be avenged for her, which will also fully account for the fate between herself and her. How did the Shen Xing song that everyone shouted and played develop? Come on, come on, keep looking back, end of this chapter. Chapter 3 Entering the Palace to Offer Condolences You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Entering the Palace to Offer Condolences Shen Xing's death is definitely related to Sui Qing. Just a little maid, how dare she take action against her master? 
someone must be behind the scenes, let's see who this mastermind behind the scenes is. However, the current crisis should be resolved first. Immediately, his body tilted and he leaned one hand against the soft pillow on the left side of the soft couch, where the golden thread outlined the blooming crabapple flowers. He even had a slight diaphragm and lowered his gaze, casually glancing at it. The golden thread outline revealed luxury. But compared to the soft pillows in the morning parents' palace, luxury and comfort are far from the same. With a slight frown, let's hold on for now and have someone change into an excellent soft pillow someday. She has been longing for all kinds of pillows for her entire life, and is extremely picky. But the thought of not having to waste sleep and forget food in the future, leaning on a soft pillow with one hand to review memorials, relieved me in my heart. T is here. She raised her finger with a majestic expression, but inadvertently revealed the sophistication that teenage girls should not have. Sui Qing felt uneasy in her heart as she handed her tea with both hands. When Su Wunyan took the tea cup, it accidentally slipped from their fingertips and landed on Su Wunyan's bright red skirt. The tea soaked a large area of her skirt. Upon seeing this scene, Sui Qing was so frightened that she knelt down and repeatedly nodded, Damn it, servant. I accidentally poured tea on Mississippi. Please punish Mississippi. No problem, did you ever bring spare clothes? Su Wunyan's face showed no signs of anger, only lowered her eyes and said lightly. Never. Never. Sui Qing shrugged and shook herself, her face pale as if she had been greatly frightened. Tell the coachman to find a silk shop nearby, and if you change, you can get up. She just saw that the location of this long street was quite prosperous, and inferred that there would be a silk shop not far away. Yes. Sui Qing slowly got up and turned to get out of the carriage. I was puzzled in my heart. If she had done something wrong as usual, the young lady would have had to peel off a layer of her skin. How could she have let herself go so easily? Under the green tiles and flying eaves of the silk shop. Su Wunyan changed into a plain white long dress, threw the gilded carved begonia flower heater in her hand to Sui Qing, reached out to catch the snowflake like cotton wool, and watched it gradually melt in her hand, feeling a chill in her palm. Standing tall in the icy snow and cold wind, enjoying the chill of the cool breeze, I sighed in my heart. It's still better to be young. Having a strong physique and fearless of severe cold, standing in the cold wind like a knife in the snow with only a slightly thick long skirt, one does not feel the cold. If it were for myself, who has fallen from an old illness, my weak and uncontrollable body would be wrapped in a thick cotton jacket and a fox cloak, but it would be difficult to resist the faint cold. Sitting in the blue carriage rented from the silk shop, following the procession of mourners entering the palace, swaying and swaying, slowly drove into the palace. Su Wunyan's flawless and smooth little hand lifted the curtain by the car window, and the deep palace wall fell into her eyes. Bricks and tiles, she was extremely familiar with them. I just didn't expect that the first thing I did when I was reborn was to return to the palace to offer condolences to myself. The sky and earth are all vast, with red walls and green tiles covered in thick snow, and flying eaves covered in snow. Everywhere we see is white morning. The palace guards patrol in an orderly manner, as there are many people entering the palace to offer condolences during the funeral of the Empress Dowager. Su Wunyan put down the curtain, furrowed her brows slightly, and her eyes were as deep as a vortex. The number of guards guarding the palace has increased, and suddenly many new faces have appeared. It seems that some people can't hold back just as they have just passed away. Shen Shinga, dressed in a plain white long dress, stood in the long line of condolences, as if a drop in the ocean, inconspicuous. She looked coldly at the officials and their women around her, some of whom were heartbroken and crying uncontrollably, and some cover their eyes with a handkerchief, pretending to sob, pretending to have a certain appearance, but in reality, there is not a drop of tears. Who is sincere and who is hypocritical and perfunctory? Su Wunyan saw through it at a glance. The condolence procession is long without a trace. 
At the forefront, in the blissful palace, in front of the golden silk Nanmu coffin of the Empress Dowager, the young emperor, who is only ten years old, has a haggard face and is dressed in linen and filial piety, kneeling devoutly on the ground. And beside him, there knelt the dignified Princess Xiao Yunji, who had just lifted her foot ban, as cold and proud as a magnolia, but with a charming demeanor. The clear eyes did not show any emotion, making it difficult to grasp. Outside the blissful palace. The town king is here. As everyone heard the sound, the long queue of mourners spontaneously dispersed and withdrew from a path, bowing respectfully with a slight nod. Looking from afar, a middle-aged man who had already passed his life expectancy looked sad but seemed to be trying his best to control his emotions. His eyes were full of grooves, but he still couldn't conceal his handsome and abundant appearance. The aura of killing and attacking envelopes the body, exuding a sense of awe without anger. Wearing a black robe with dark patterns, but underneath the robe, only one dark boot can be seen. He walked slowly with a limp, leaning on a dark and glowing cane. Coo. Coo. Dot. The morning procession remained silent, surprisingly quiet, with only the sound of his cane colliding with the ground echoing on the walls of the open palace. One sound after another, hitting the heart. No one dared to show a hint of contempt and disrespect, all trembling with fear. Brother in the morning procession, Su Wunyan instinctively clenched his fist in his sleeve and choked up in his heart, shouting. She didn't realize that her eyes were already rosy, her nose was slightly sore, and she struggled to hold back tears as she burst into her eyes. Why do we have to walk to the blissful palace? Why not sit on the chair specially made for you by the family of AI? The AI family has long issued an order that you can enter the palace in a wheelchair at any time. Close your eyes and find the answer. You're trying to intimidate. This is to declare to the world that even if the AI family dies, those who were previously suppressed by the AI family and were eager to move forward, standing opposite the AI family, those with wolf-like ambitions should not deceive no one behind the AI family nor dare they harm the young emperor at the funeral of the A.I. family. Behind the A.I. family, there is the prince's mansion of Xinghua, with your elder brother, the prince of Xinghua. Although I had known that my time was running out and I secretly planned to avoid the turmoil of the country, after all, the affairs of the court are constantly changing and unpredictable. If the king of the town comes forward to intimidate, it will definitely make those who are not well prepared but eager to act dare not act recklessly. The king of Zhen limped past Su Wunyan without looking at her. Brother, the AI family is still alive. But I can't recognize you, let alone tell you the truth, after all, this matter is too absurd. Su Wunyan choked up in her heart. After the appearance of the king of Zhen, the civil and military officials were indeed more respectful towards the young emperor and the eldest princess. He can indeed intimidate some people, but there are always those who are restless, hiding their ambitions and waiting in seclusion. Now that Empress Dowager Su, who controls Qin Yuan, has passed away, her funeral is the best time to launch an attack. Empress Dowager's Decree The person who came was the Twelve Princes, the youngest younger brother of the late Emperor, and Su Wunyan's most considerate and loyal attendant. He walked with a golden dragon pattern in his hand, full of vitality and unparalleled scenery. Huh, Empress Dowager Su is a pillow controller, end of this chapter. Chapter 4 Palace Transformation You are listening at NovelFull.audio The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 5 Palace Chaos You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Palace Chaos, King Ying if you dare to see blood in front of the Empress Dowager's coffin, it is a great rebellion, an official sternly rebuked. The bones of the Empress Dowager are not yet cold, yet you intend to steal the country. Have you ever been worthy of the Empress Dowager? The twelve princes simply stopped pretending and proudly said, It's you who disrespect the Empress Dowager. If you don't respect the Empress Dowager's orders, you should be punished. Who else dares to resist the imperial decree without respect? 
Today, in front of the Empress Dowager, I will clear the Emperor's side. Then I turned my head and pulled the young Emperor to my side, with a generous and kind expression. Zhou is not afraid, with the presence of the Emperor's uncle, see who else dares to cause trouble today. The palm and back of the young Emperor were both cold, and his thin lips were slightly pursed. Princess Xiao Yunji's cold and piercing eyes were still devoid of any ripples, calm and composed, somewhat terrifying. Seeing that King Ying still controlled the overall situation, most officials were worried about the safety of their families and dared not speak out in anger. Su Wunyan in the morning procession looked around, and indeed, these imperial guards were all new faces, secretly replaced by Xiao Yuanying. But why haven't we seen him yet, Regent Prince Situ Xianyan? Su Wunyan originally speculated that after her death, the first person to lose her composure and seize the opportunity to seize power and assist in politics should be Prince Regent Situ Xianyan. Nowadays, in the state of Qingyuan, the person who holds the power of one person over 10,000 people is Situ Xianyan. However, during today's palace coup, he did not appear. Is it quietly hibernating somewhere, with praying mantis catching cicadas and yellow sparrows behind? As long as he appears and extends his hand to seize imperial power, today Guangming Xingda can eliminate him. But if he were really a spy of the southern Qin kingdom, Qingyuan kingdom would fall into the hands of Xiao Yuanying and be in chaos. He would have no choice but to intervene. Perhaps it will also secretly contribute to the situation. King Ying, you forced the death of Lu, massacred officials for no reason, and carried out the act of stealing the country. As the King of Zhen, I will clean up the thieves for the Empress Dowager today. The King of Zhen leaned forward with a cane and held his chest high, only to hear the cane click and bang to the ground. With a honk sound, his deep internal strength scattered everywhere, lifting up his black robe and skirt, his green hair fluttering. The aura of killing and attacking surrounded me, and the fierce gaze made me feel cold. The twelve princes were slightly frightened by the aura of killing and attacking, and instinctively pulled the young emperor in front of them, explaining, King Zhen, I am following the imperial decree of the Empress Dowager, not stealing the country. You misunderstood. Your wrongdoing is evident, and you dare to argue. Even if I die today, I will definitely stop you from plotting rebellion and stealing the country. The twelve princes took a step back in fear and held on to the shoulders of the young emperor, saying, What's wrong? The king of Zhen also wants to resist the imperial decree and not respect it. In order to give himself courage, he said bitterly, Even if you have galloped on the battlefield and won invincible battles, you are now just a limp struggling to survive. If you resist today, you will undoubtedly die. A group of guards quickly surrounded the town king, and the atmosphere was tense for a moment. Everyone admired the loyalty and bravery of the town king, but also worried about his safety. After all, the king of the town has passed the age of knowing his destiny. He lost a leg more than a decade ago and has never been to the battlefield again. Despite his old age, his sword is still old. Sui Qin was so scared that she lay on the ground like a puddle of soft mud, trembling quietly. Miss, we shouldn't all really die here, should we? The little maid in the backyard had never seen such a scene of seizing power and life and death. Su Wunyan was calm and steady, as if she had been used to these scenes. Even though she had already experienced more brutal and bloody imperial power struggles, her only elder brother was in crisis, and she couldn't help but worry. If Empress Dowager Su, who was at the pinnacle of power, her only weakness was her elder brother. The king of the town resists orders without respect, and there is no forgiveness for killing. The twelve princes hugged the young emperor and gave an order. The guards surrounding the town king drew their swords together and aimed the snowy blade at the town king. Damn it! Whoever dares to point a knife at the king of town today, I'll kill him first. General Chu Yijing kicked away the guard in front of him, only hearing the sound of the guard's bones breaking. He curled up in a corner and couldn't get up again. The guards saw this and turned their swords towards General Xianwei. The king of Zhen and the general of Xianwei smiled at each other, 
with no fear on their faces, just like when they fought side by side in the past. With one glance, they had a perfect understanding. General Chu, do you even want to resist orders without respect? If you step down now, I can spare you from dying. The Twelve Prince finally showed a fierce expression, after all, the overall situation is under his control, and there is no need to fear anyone. Today, whoever he wants to die must die. King Ying, there is doubt about the authenticity of the imperial edict you brought. Why did Lu Yuan, a scholar of the Hanlin Academy, bump into the dragon pillar and beg for death? You know it well. Now that the Empress Dowager's bones are not cold, you are aiming your sword at the King of Zhen, which may be too unsightly to eat. Even if you succeed in stealing the country today, kill all your loyal ministers, and speak ill of yourself, it will still be difficult to block the mouths of the people all over the world. The twelve princes sneered recklessly, General Chu's disobedience to orders is not respected, and there is no forgiveness for killing. Yes. Another large number of guards arrived, encircling General Chu and the King of Zhen tightly. Entering the palace, one is not allowed to bring weapons. The King of Zhen and the General of Chu are both unarmed. The King of Ying's intention is to kill the rooster and warn the monkeys, but the King of Zhen and the General of Chu are both veteran generals on the battlefield. They quickly snatched the long sword from the guards and started fighting. Blood splattered everywhere, staining the blissful palace, and each guard fell one by one. All the officials around were as pale as earth, afraid to act recklessly. The controlled officials and their families huddled together, and even the timid fainted from fear. The number of guards was numerous, and the king of the town only had one leg. He was soon injured and gradually lost the battle. General Chu's clone lacked skills and could only watch as the town king was injured. Uncle Twelve, your mother treated you well before she was born. Now that you have stained the blissful palace with blood, she will not rest in peace after her death. Do you deserve her? The young emperor Xiao Yunzhe, who was held down by the twelve princes' strong arm on his shoulder and unable to move, sternly said. The twelve prince leaned down and whispered, she's not your biological mother. After all, you're just a chess piece in her power. Do you think for her? Do you know that the death of your biological mother, Lady Ro, is related to her inevitable fate? The young emperor Xiao Yunzhe's eyes were slightly darkened, and his fists were clenched tighter and tighter in his sleeves. He pursed his lips and said coldly, The prince of Zhengua is my own uncle. If you hurt him, I will definitely demand that you repay him with blood. My dear uncle. He is the elder brother of the empress dowager's compatriots. Before his death, he regarded your biological mother as an enemy. If you treat them as your own uncle, they may not necessarily treat you as your own nephew. The Twelve Prince sneered. The King of Zhen was injured in multiple places around his body, and there were many guards who could no longer resist. His crutch was kicked away, and the wrist holding the knife was slashed. With a sudden kick, he was kicked to the front of Su Wunyan's memorial tablet, and blood sprayed from his mouth onto the tablet and the golden Nanmu coffin. Brother Su Wunyan quietly clenched her fists in her sleeves, her nails almost pinching into the flesh of her palm, turning white in waves. The young emperor had an abnormal expression and remained motionless. Did you choose to sacrifice the town king? In the current situation, there are many misfortunes and misfortunes for my elder brother. When he escaped from the Forgotten River Hill, Su Wunyan secretly swore that he would protect his elder brother's safety until old age, no matter when or where he lived. But at this moment, she is just the daughter of a mere prime minister, with no power or power, just a commoner. How can we safely rescue our elder brother from the twelve hands? Can you still clean up twelve and not let the world doubt your identity? The guards didn't give him any chance to catch his breath, so they raised their swords and surrounded him at the critical moment. Young ancestors, parents of food and clothing, welcome to roast about lighting up the little stars, and use the power of the flood to send me up come on, 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 end of this chapter. Chapter 6 Dreaming Back
You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 6 Dreaming Back, Stop It In the crowd of controlled officials and their families, there came a shout of reprimand. Although it was a childish voice, it was filled with the air of killing and coercion that had been fought for a long time, making people dare not cause trouble. Even the sword-wielding guard was intimidated and turned around upon hearing the sound. This sentence, stop, caught the attention of everyone present, Su Wunyan, dressed in white plain clothes, but at this moment her appearance was that of Shinshinga, a teenager. She stood up from the morning procession, holding her sleeves with dignity, walking steadily, holding her head high and walking towards the Hall of Bliss. Her eyes, which were full of spiritual energy, were now gloomy and solemn, as if looking down at all living beings. She was the only one in the world. Everyone was confused, but for a moment no one stopped them. Mississippi Mississippi. What are you doing? Sui Ching, kneeling on the side with soft legs, called out softly. Su Wunian ignored her and walked straight towards the blissful palace. Among the family members of officials, there are also many wealthy families who know Shinshinga, but the Shinshinga in front of them makes them feel extremely unfamiliar. In the blissful palace, the controlled right prime minister Shen Pingjue was also greatly shocked when she saw the person coming. Her behavior was strange and she looked like the usual great prime minister's path. I don't know where she got it wrong today, how can she act around? In the past, relying on being the cousin of the empress dowager, I became accustomed to being arrogant and domineering outside, daring to cause any trouble. But at this critical moment of life and death, if she wanted to become a demon, she was afraid it would affect the entire Shen family. So she scolded, Shen Gu, why don't you quickly step back? No one answered him, and he sternly said again, Shen Shinga, why are you going crazy again? Step back. Su Wunyan didn't even glance at him and walked straight to the twelve princes. Only the twelve princes, young emperors, and Princess Chang, upon seeing the visitor, showed a look of shock in their eyes. Their steps, posture, gaze, and demeanor were clearly identical to those of the Empress Dowager. If it weren't for her different appearance, they would have felt in a daze that the deceased Empress Dowager had reappeared in the mortal world. The eyes of the Empress Dowager trembled with a hint of spiritual energy. If anyone around her cared about herself, they would know that this was a precursor to the Empress Dowager's anger. Suwun Yen Fan's peach blossom lips slightly curled up after the March rain, revealing a smile, but with a hidden knife in her smile, Xiao Twelve, when did I give you a secret order from my family? You. You are. The Twelve Prince's face was as shocked as thunder. In the world, only the Empress Dowager dared to call him Little Twelve. And the tone is exactly the same as the Empress Dowager. Come on, Su Wunyan gently lifted her right hand and smiled gently. The twelve princes almost instinctively reflexively bent over and leaned forward to support Su Wunyan's right hand. As usual, as long as the Empress Dowager raised her hand like this, he would greet him like a puppy, hand over his arm, and let the Empress Dowager support him. The piercing sound echoed through the blissful palace. The twelve prince was slapped to the ground by the Empress Dowager, covering his scorching left face and immersed in shock. Su Wunyan took the opportunity to pull the young emperor over and took out a black sun with the pattern of the other side from his sleeve. He held it in his hand and whispered in the young emperor's ear, since I have handed it over to you, why don't you use it in a critical moment? That's your own uncle. Mother. The young emperor's eyes showed a look of guilt. The other side Sun was something that the mother had privately left for him before her death, and only he and the mother knew about it. Xiao Twelve, how dare you dare to forge a decree and attempt to steal the country? The AI family has really hurt you for nothing in these years, Su Wunyan turned around and said condescendingly. I, I didn't. The fear of the Empress Dowager was ingrained in his bones from a young age, and only when the Empress Dowager died did he dare to think about the throne of the dragon chair. Su Wunyan snatched the imperial edict from Zhang Zhen, a scholar of the Hanlin Academy, and fiercely smashed it on his face. How dare you use the shoddy fake dragon seal to blackmail the emperor and order the lords? 
The twelve princes shrugged and knelt on the ground, holding their breath. The civil and military officials present, as well as their families, were all confused. Could it really be that the Empress Dowager, who had already passed away, borrowed her body to revive her soul? Suwunian turned around and helped up the severely injured king of town. Chu Yijing quickly stepped forward and helped to hold on to the king of town. Elder brother. Did the AI family tell you not to enter the palace after their passing? You shouldn't have come today, she said with a choked expression, her eyes turning red. Ah Nian, is it really you? The town king even found it hard to believe. Su Wunyan did not answer him. Someone, hurry up and take the king of the town to treat the wound. Several eunuchs outside the palace ran in, accompanied by Chu Yijing, and left the blissful palace. Su Wunian turned his eyes and looked down at the Hanlin scholar Zhang Zhen from a high position. Zhang Zhen, you come from a humble family. The AI family has given you the opportunity to rise to fame and a high position and high salary, but you have colluded with the rebellious officials and thieves, helping the tyrant to wreak havoc. Zhang Zhen trembled with fear, even the twelve princes were afraid of her, so he quickly knelt on the ground and said, I dare not. Su Wunyan kicked him on the shoulder and flipped him over, dare not. What else dare not do after all this? This standard kick made all the civil and military officials present half believe and half doubt. After all, there are many officials in the court who have been kicked by the Empress Dowager like this, instantly making people dream of the trembling days when the Empress Dowager went to court. Someone, pull out this dog that eats inside and outside, cut its eyes and tongue, and behead it in public. Empress Dowager spare her life. Empress Dowager spare her life. Zhang Zhen was dragged out of the blissful palace. Su Wunyan turned to the twelve princes kneeling on the ground and said, I remember your first offense. I will not argue with you. Immediately roll back to your domain, I will not be summoned, and I will never return to the imperial capital. Yes. The twelve princes stood up and fled in embarrassment, rushing out the door. However, when they saw the controlled civil and military officials and their families, they suddenly realized. You little girl, how dare you deceive me! What a great courage! Xiao Twelve, do you dare to disobey the AI family? The twelve princes began to pretend to be foolish. You're not the Empress Dowager at all, he turned his head and said to Shinpingsue, you just called her Shinshinga. Who are you? This. Shinpingsue had difficulty speaking. The situation is unclear now. If we admit that she is the eldest daughter of the Shin family, if the twelve princes gain power, his Shin family will inevitably be implicated by Shingu. But today's Shinga is not like myself, it really has some traces of the Empress Dowager's swift and decisive actions during her lifetime. This is really unbelievable. If the Shinga at this moment is really borrowed by the Empress Dowager to revive her soul, it would be a ridiculous story in the world, but the current facts must be admitted. But how should I answer now? At this moment, he wished there was a crack in the ground that could penetrate and disappear in place. In a hurry, he came to his senses and his eyes darkened, causing him to faint. The twelve princes curled their lips and sneered, the situation is now under the control of our king. Even if you are truly the Empress Dowager, you cannot turn the tide. Moreover, you are not the Empress Dowager at all. Someone, drag down this traitor who impersonates the Empress Dowager and kill him with a cane. The true traitor is you. She is really the Empress Dowager, I can testify alone. The young emperor spoke with a stern tone. The Empress Dowager passed away, and the young emperor fell ill with worry. Everyone looked like the Empress Dowager. Take a good look, and the person in front of you is clearly a young girl in her teens. It's impossible to be the Empress Dowager who is approaching her age and knows her destiny. She's the Queen Mother. Sun. An ancient wind instrument made of clay, round or oval in shape, with six, eight, nine, ten, and double octaves. Pottery is the most common, but there are also stone and bone works. 
It is a closed-mouthed wind instrument unique to the Han ethnic group, with a simple and simple tone that is unique to the earthly sound. It is the closest instrument to the Taoist heavenly sound. Occupies an important position in the world's primitive art history. End of this chapter. Chapter 7. Reversal of the Situation. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 7. Reversal of the Situation, Shao 12, You Are Reckless. The spirit of the AI family saw you causing trouble in heaven and was disturbed by you, so they borrowed their body to revive their soul and prevent you from plotting rebellion. The AI family originally did not want to cause more killing on the road to the underworld, but wanted to let you have a way to live, but you chose to seek your own death. Since that's the case, I will sacrifice my soul with the blood of you and others today. After speaking, he picked up the sun with the black carved pattern on the other side in his hand and prepared to summon the royal martyrs who had been secretly trained during his lifetime. As soon as the sun sounded, the martyrs hidden in the palace would pour out in a fierce battle. Su Wunyan didn't just want to let the twelve princes go, but rather the families of officials who didn't want to be controlled by the twelve princes' guards to become victims of this imperial power struggle. As long as the twelve princes lead troops out of the palace, there must be millions of ways to prevent him from returning to the domain alive. Twelve princes, plotting rebellion is a serious crime. You should be executed by the nine clans. The Empress Dowager intended to spare you a way of life, but you were determined to seek death. I'm really tired of living. The thick and deep voice of the middle-aged man came from outside the blissful palace. The newcomer has a handsome figure, starry eyebrows and starry eyes. He is dressed in a dark robe, with silver threads outlining cloud patterns on the cuffs and collar. Although he has passed the age of knowing his destiny, time seems to have not left a mark on his perfect and impeccable face. His eyes were sharp like eagles, as if he could see through everything without showing any signs, as if everything was well planned. Only when his gaze fell on Su Wunyan, a hint of strangeness flashed, as if he was confirming something. After a moment of contemplation, he bowed and bowed, Please forgive me, Empress Dowager. I apologize for my late arrival. The regent kings, who wielded immense power, all bowed their heads and paid homage to the young girl. That person must have been the Empress Dowager, using her body to revive her soul. As a result, civil and military officials and their families all knelt down respectfully, bowing and bowing their heads, saying, Long live the Empress Dowager, long live the Empress Dowager. The twelve princes, along with the guards he brought, were all flustered, looking left and right without any hesitation in their hands. Su Wunyan stood up, her spiritual eyes pressing down on Regent Wang Situ Xianyan. Her hand in her sleeve trembled slightly, and you had just chosen the right timing. I'm afraid I've been secretly watching the fire from the shore, waiting for a crisis, and using this as a way to gain power. From today on, civil and military officials do not trust the young emperor, but only trust you as regent. My face doesn't show, my voice is immature, but I speak mature and proficient language, all the ministers are on par. Situ Xianyan then straightened his body and turned to the twelve princes and the guards outside the blissful palace who controlled the officials and their families, saying calmly, anyone who immediately puts down their weapons and surrenders can avoid being executed by the family. Before the words could be finished, a large number of elite guards suddenly gathered outside the blissful palace. On the snow-covered roof, a dense swarm of archers suddenly emerged, with sharp arrows aimed at the guards holding knives below. The situation suddenly turned around. The guards looked at each other, knowing that their defeat had been decided, but in order not to implicate their families, they had to throw down their weapons and kneel down to surrender. Upon seeing this scene, the twelve princes blushed, white as winter snow, and their feet were limp on the ground. The regent's elite guards entered the blissful palace and restrained the twelve princes, making them unable to move. Suwunian turned around and took the hand of the young emperor, returning the other side Sun to his palm. He whispered, Zhur, no matter when, you must treat the king of Jin kindly. He is your own uncle and the only person you can trust at the moment. Before her death, 
the Empress Dowager warned that this sun should not be used unless absolutely necessary. If the Empress Dowager did not appear just now, her son would also sound this sun to save his uncle. The young emperor explained with tears in his eyes. In the future, the AI family will no longer be here, and the country will be in your hands. The task is heavy and the road is long. You must remember the expectations of the AI family for you. Yes, son, remember it in your heart. Furthermore, it is against the heavenly way for the AI family to use their bodies to revive their souls, and Shinshinga will also lose his life. I hope you will find an opportunity to compensate Shinshinga in the future. Mother, can you stay? I still need your support, the young emperor pleaded. The way of heaven cannot be violated. Jur, you should grow up now. Mother. The AI family should go now. Before the young emperor and others could speak, Su Wunyan closed his eyes and fell to the ground, unable to wake up no matter what the people around him called. Princess Xiao Yunji watched coldly from beginning to end, as if everything had nothing to do with her, and remained indifferent. At first, Su Wunyan pretended to be unconscious, but later on, for some unknown reason, she really couldn't move and fell asleep. On the same day, in a damp and dark room filled with the smell of decaying blood, a woman with wrinkles on her face and disheveled white hair faintly heard the sound of the bell outside, giggling in the sky, eerie and terrifying. Su Wunyan, you're finally dead. Cluck. His voice was hoarse, like a stuck machine expansion, cracked like a ghost. You died before me, I lived longer than you, and in the end, I won. She wanted to clap her hands and cheer, only to remember that her hands and feet had already been cut off by Su Wunyan's men, and she had been tortured for a whole ten years by putting her in a foul-smelling septic tank. A dazzling light came over, and she could only squint and adapt, it must be my son, my son has come to save me. Dream of your spring and autumn dreams. The Empress Dowager has ordered us to execute you. Today is the day when you will die in the underworld. The round-faced old lady entered with a skilled palace maid, who walked straight towards the septic tank. Her hand covered in calluses wrapped around her neck, and she exclaimed in fear, bold. This palace is the birth mother of the young emperor, and this palace is the empress dowager. If you dare to touch this palace, I will order the emperor to destroy you and the nine other tribes. The emperor's biological mother committed suicide in fear of guilt ten years ago, and now in the eyes of the world, you are nothing but a dead person with a lasting reputation. No. You can't do this to this palace, she shouted desperately. The palace maid exerted a slight force on her fingers, and the sound of her neck breaking came from her palm. Her roar came to an abrupt end, and the mysterious chamber returned to its usual calm. Su Wunyan had a very long dream, which was full of experiences that Shinshinga had recorded since then. After an unknown amount of time, she slowly opened her eyes, and between them, a black shadow appeared. Blinking his eyes, tears rolled down his cheeks. She brushed her sleeves and found that she still had those flawless white hands, and had memories of Shinshinga in her mind. The crystal clear tears on her fingertips prove that she and Shinshinga have been empathetic from this moment on. Calculating the time, Su Yunru should have been executed. As long as she completes the last task, she can truly live on under the name of Shinshinga. The black shadow gradually became clear, and it turned out to be the regent Prince Situ Xianyan. His sharp-edged hand lightly grasped the sky-blue wine glass, and when Su Wunyan woke up, he lightly put down the glass. Su Wunyan slowly stood up, feeling a sharp pain in her right wrist and bare foot. After all, Shenshinga was just a helpless little girl, slapping and kicking her feet with a little force, almost dislocating her hands and feet. Suppressing the stinging pain and looking around, I am now sitting on a soft rosewood carved bed, with simple yet luxurious furnishings, restrained and elegant. Looking back carefully, I only remember that Shen Pingsue and a woman with a gentle voice ordered someone to send her unconscious back to the Shen mansion. She really fell asleep on the carriage, and then I knew nothing about what happened afterwards. 
Kneeling to Collect, Momo, End of this Chapter Chapter 8 Deadline You are listening at NovelFull.audio The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 9 Helpless List You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Helpless List Upon seeing this, Su Wunyan quickly found a screen and hid behind it. Through the gaps in the screen, Su Wunyan saw dozens of figures suddenly rushing towards him in the heavy snow outside the window, whose figures gradually became apparent. They were twelve women wearing masks with patterns on the other side and white thin cicada wings, graceful and graceful. The wind and snow swept in, and the white skirt danced with the wind. They hold twelve musical instruments, some leaning against the window holding blood-colored jade flutes, some sit and lie on the soft collapse, holding a pipa in their hands, some people step on sandalwood carved flower tea with their bare feet covered in golden bells. If it weren't for the murderous atmosphere inside the house, they would have thought it was a music studio composing and sharing music. The twelfth ghost sound silver girl ranked tenth on the list, said the regent in a low and cold voice, with sharp eyes still calm. Situ Xian Yen, today is your day of death. The silver girl led by her spoke the harshest words in the most coquettish voice. However, before the words could be finished, the twelve ghost Yin maidens launched a deadly attack. The sound of the ghost Yin sounded like a heavenly melody, but it caused great mental turmoil. The white skirt was accompanied by the dancing of jade white snowflakes, piercing towards the region like a sharp knife. On the coffee table, the blue wine glass and blue and white wine pot were covered in cracks before finally exploding. The fragments seemed to be able to understand the instructions in the ghostly voice, and finally shot towards the regent. The regent frowned slightly and used his internal power to block his ear and prevent the disturbing ghost sound. If it were for the past, he would definitely not be affected at all. Perhaps he drank too much tonight, or was feeling a bit overwhelmed in his heart. Brushing ink colored long sleeves, the sandalwood coffee table flipped over, blocking the flying porcelain fragments. The powerful internal force of the palm shattered the remaining snowflakes and dissipated them in the air. The silver woman holding the blood colored jade flute pointed at the carved cylinder inside the house and used her sword to stab the sandalwood coffee table horizontally in the air. Two internal forces resisted and tore, and the sandalwood coffee table could not withstand the powerful internal force and exploded. The silver maiden aimed her blood colored jade flute at the regent, which was her fatal blow. The sandalwood coffee table cracked open and the regent saw the silver girl's other side flower mask gradually transform into a familiar face. The regent's sharp eyes trembled slightly, obviously unbelievable, and he watched helplessly as the person stabbed at him with a jade flute. The silver girl's thumb pressed the machine expansion on the blood-colored jade flute, and a sharp knife popped out, aimed at the regent's heart and stabbed it. But her assassination did not go as smoothly as she had imagined. As she approached the regent, her speed slowed down because the regent's internal strength was incredibly deep, tearing apart her snow.white veil and gradually tearing open each opening. The closer she got an inch, the more cracks she had in her clothes. In the end, she heard the sound of her bones shattering, her internal organs shattering, and her seven orifices bleeding, but she still didn't give up. Finally, the dagger pierced the regent's heart, and she laughed with relief. Sisters, the gold body has been broken, and the rest will be left to you. The internal barrier around the regent seemed to weaken, and the gaze of the jade flute silver girl gradually dissipated. Finally, it seemed as if her soul had been drained and heavily landed on the ground, with snowflakes covering her tattered white dress. The piercing pain in his chest made the regent instantly regain consciousness and see that the person who stabbed him was not her, but the ghost sound silver girl jade flute. The wound was not deep, and the regent pulled out the small knife from the jade flute and threw it to the ground. The blood on the blade had turned black. The remaining eleven ghost sound silver maidens attacked repeatedly, perhaps due to injuries. All the other side flower masks he saw turned into her faces. Whenever he wanted to kill someone, he couldn't bear it and ended up with multiple injuries on his body. 
Suddenly, an injured man in blue flew over the window, holding two soft swords and protecting the regent. Master, many top assassins from the martial arts world have suddenly arrived outside the door. The people guarding the moon villa have suffered heavy casualties, he said, who on earth is it? With such great ability, invite so many top assassins in the martial arts world. Despite being on the brink of death, Guayini Nu Jinling managed to get up with her last breath and said, Nanshan spy, everyone must be executed. Before the words could be finished, the eleven silver girls attacked together. They had no intention of fleeing in a hurry, but had made up their minds to die. Soft swords danced, eleven silver maidens fell to the ground, snowflakes fluttered, and the curtain fell mournfully. The poison rapidly spread within the regent's body, and the young man holding a soft sword supported the regent, saying, Master, you need to detoxify as soon as possible. Stepping out of the house, the snow danced wildly, and the assassins didn't give the two any chance to catch their breath. Some of them stood with their hands down on branches covered in snow, some casually sit on the snow.white roof, holding a blue wine jug in their hands, some hold white feather fans and block the entrance of the courtyard, some leaned against the vermilion carved pillars. Blocking any way out for the two of them. Number 9 on the list. Embroidered Rain Lord. He skillfully uses silver needles to kill invisibly, and when the needle is used, blood will be seen and countless people will be killed. Chuanqing looked at the man in pink leaning against the edge of the vermilion carved pillar and said solemnly. Overpraised. The man in pink brushed his sleeves and blushed, smiling like a flower. Turning his face to look at the man wearing a light blue veil at the entrance of the courtyard, he said, how can we rank eighth on the list? Feathered Spirit The iconic weapon in his hand is the white human bone feather fan, and each fan bone must come from a martial arts expert. The man in blue casually shook the feather fan in his hand and said, Wrong, they must be extremely wicked and have a deep and violent aura, in order for me to hold it in my hand every day. Coincidentally, the bone of the regent king, who wields immense power and is ruthless and ruthless, is very appealing to me. Crazy, said the regent in a low and piercing voice. Hmm <laughs> hmm. With a chilling laugh, the regent, who is alone and has no desires or desires, also has weaknesses. I wonder whose face did the regent see in the ghost sound formation just now. The regent's sharp gaze swept over the old man holding a wine jug on the roof, and finally fell on the white-clad girl standing on the tree branch with her hands down. Her eyes darkened, and she finally whispered something to the crowd on her side. Chuanqing's tearful eyes roared, Master, no way. This is a command. They are the most powerful, but they only ranked sixth on the helplessness list. Drunk for a thousand miles. Just a drunken old man, the youth are not afraid. Hmm <laughs> hmm. The chilling laughter came from the feather transformation spirit, the poison Situ Xianyan may have a chance of winning against the three of us. But if you add the snow demon, who ranks third on the list, you have no chance of winning. Snow demon. Chuanqing had never seen her before and never expected that the third-ranked girl on the list was actually a girl in her early teens. You haven't seen her, it's normal. Anyone who has seen her has gone to hell. Before he could finish speaking, a black shadow flashed in front of Yu Hualing, and a palm shook him away. Let's go. The regent roared, and a blue figure was pushed out several tens of meters away by his palm. Yes. He held back his tears, his heart wrenching as he flew further away, hating that his martial arts skills were not perfect. Even if he stayed and fought side by side, he couldn't help his master. Embroidered rain lord and drunk from afar flew one after another, their task being to eliminate all the regent's men, leaving no one behind. Kidu was stopped by the regent, and the embroidered rain lord had no choice but to throw a silver embroidered rain towards the crowd, connecting the flying snowflake petals into a huge silver dragon. The regent waved his long sleeve and used his internal power to scatter the soaring silver dragon, but a small part of the silver needle still pierced Chuanqing's body. Simple and clear thinking. Naiha list. 
First place X, second place X, third place. Snow Demon, fourth place. Fifth place. Sixth place. Drunkard Drunk for thousands of miles, seventh place. Eighth place. Feather Transformation Spirit, ninth place. Embroidered Rain Lord, tenth place. Twelve Ghostine Women, end of this chapter. Chapter 10. Silver Moon Jade Pendant. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 10 Silver Moon Jade Pendant The move was deadly, and the killing intent was boiling. The Regent King defeated four with one, until the backs of the youth were submerged in the heavy snow. He then gathered his thoughts and fought back. The roof lifted up, debris flew everywhere, the big trees broke, the red walls collapsed, and the carved wooden pillars exploded in all directions. Everywhere we saw, it was a mess. Five people fought fiercely all night, and the sky gradually turned lead gray. Embroidered Rain Lord's meridians were pierced by silver needles, his pale blue gauze clothes were covered in blood dots, his face was pricked with silver needles, and he fell to the ground and died, the bone fan of the feathered spirit was shattered into powder, and the body was embedded in the wall, the body of a thousand miles drunk was torn apart and the blood mouth on the head opened and closed one by one, unable to close its eyes in death. The snow demon lay under the only half of the acacia tree, barely breathing and unable to move. And the regent, the poison had already spread to his internal organs, his sharp eyes gradually dyed red, and the corners of his eyes slowly left black blood. He leaned against the broken walls, with only one last breath left. If someone were to give him an antidote and use his skills to heal his injuries at this moment, perhaps he could regain his life. The entire Shoyue villa has already been covered in blood, with corpses of assassins and guards scattered everywhere. This is the most brutal assassination attempt in Qingyuan Kingdom since the end of the conflict, and the news will surely shock the martial arts world. After all, how could they make it to the top ten and be eliminated from the top five overnight? Su Wunyan finally walked out, her white embroidered shoes stepping into the thick snow, creaking and slowly walking towards the regent. Blood and water blurred the regent's vision, making it difficult for him to see the person in front of him. He said angrily, Are you still alive? Just as Su Wunyan was about to open his mouth, he heard a clanging sound of weapons colliding outside the silent mountain villa. Perhaps it was the fleeing person who brought reinforcements. She cannot leave any chance of survival for the regent. So he picked up the self.defense dagger that originally belonged to the snow demon on the snow, squatted down, and searched for the location where he had just been stabbed in the heart by the silver girl jade flute. He then sank the dagger inch by inch. Ah! Every inch the dagger penetrated, the blood in the regent's mouth surged more and more. Su Wunyan almost dislocated her right hand and couldn't use any force. She grabbed the handle of the dagger with both hands and continued to push it inward until the entire blade sank into the regent's heart. Ah! Uh. At the end of his life and death, his hazy blood eyes seemed to see her figure, and he exerted all his strength to reach out his hands soaked in blood, attempting to touch the face. He gently said, Ah Lien! Alien! You've come to pick me up. We can finally meet again. That hand ultimately couldn't touch the face, and with a thud, it fell into the snow, dying the only inch of snow. White ground under Su Wunyan's feet red. The regent, who is not close to women, is actually an infatuated species, still thinking of your close attendant until his death. When Su Wunyan suspected that the regent was a spy of the Southern Chen, he sent someone to investigate him carefully including those around him. The only maid he could approach was Alien, whom he spoke of. Later, it was discovered that the maid was a spy sent by the Southern Qin Kingdom, so someone was sent to secretly eliminate her. Regent, if it weren't for you being a spy of the Southern Qin Kingdom, perhaps you wouldn't have died. Su Wunyan pulled out his dagger, but accidentally saw something familiar in his arms. A silver moon jade pendant. Although only half a corner was exposed, Su Wunyan almost recognized it at a glance. How could he have this thing? 
looking at the jade pendant, there were the words, Silver Moon, carved by Xiao Yuanjun himself. This jade pendant was thrown into the furnace and burned by himself long after Xiao Yuanjun's death. How could it appear on him? Holding the Silver Moon Jade Pendant can mobilize the Silver Moon Dark Guard trained by Xiao Yuanjun during his lifetime. According to Xiao Yuanjun's cautious nature, the Jade Pendant he personally engraved should be the only one in the world, and it should be in the hands of the highest leader of the Silver Moon Dark Guard. But that Jade Pendant has been burned. Why is there an identical Jade Pendant in the world? Could it be that Xiao Yuanjun personally carved a jade pendant with the words, Silver Moon, on it? Is there not only one piece in the world? So, there are two highest leaders who can mobilize the Silver Moon Dark Guard. Is there another Silver Moon Dark Guard that has become a mist fish? It shouldn't be, otherwise the Silver Moon Dark Guard will appear on the night of Xiao Yuanjun's death. Unfortunately, the regent has run out of breath, so it seems that the answer can only be found by oneself. The autumn sun rises high, and the snow on the eaves gradually melts. The white snow pressing on the branches gradually plumped up into crystal clear water droplets, ready to drip. The traces of last night disappeared almost completely in the melting of ice and snow. Su Wunyan was found on the street by the plainclothes servants sent by the Shen family, but did not report to the government. It is believed that the people of the Shen family were afraid of causing chaos, which would affect the reputation of the daughter of the Shen family. As soon as the people of Shen Mansion received the news, Zhang Jilan, with a haggard face, hurriedly went out to greet them. At the entrance of Shen Mansion, there were people standing there. Su Wunyan suppressed the discomfort in her heart and withdrew her hand from Zhang Jilan's palm. But Zhang Jilan seemed to have not felt Su Wunyan's emotions. With a loving gaze, she looked up and down at Su Wunyan, carefully examined her, and finally breathed a sigh of relief. Her eyes were rosy and she said, It's okay, it's okay. She scanned the bustling crowd outside the mansion and grabbed Su Wunyan's small hand, Let's go in and talk. Are you hungry? She turned to Grandma Jiang next to her and ordered, Order the kitchen to prepare some hot, delicious vegetarian food, and quickly deliver it to the Lianyan Pavilion. After the young lady washes up, she can have a bite of hot food. By the way, bring the osmanthus cake from my room together. Shinga loves to eat the osmanthus cake I personally made. Madam is still very attentive and constantly concerned about the young lady. Let's go and get it now, said Grandma Jiang. She slightly supported her body, lowered her head, and turned away. Last night, I heard that your carriage was robbed halfway, which scared me to the point where I lost half of my soul. However, Xiang Ye was worried that the Shen family's female family would go missing, which would damage his reputation. Therefore, he sent someone to secretly search for your whereabouts. If there is no news of you again at dawn, he will have to report it to the authorities. Su Wunian remained silent, listening to Zhang Jilan chattering along the way. In Shenxingde's memory, Zhang Jilan treated her extremely well. Although she was not her biological mother, she was meticulous in caring toward Shenxingde, more than her own mother. Shenxingde's biological mother fell ill at a very young age and remained unconscious. The Shen family only then took care of Shenxingde by carrying his second aunt Zhang Jilan as their wife. The fact that Su Wunyan lost her mother at a young age is somewhat similar to Shenxingde, so Su Wunyan has some unfamiliarity and resistance towards her mother. Moreover, Zhang Jilan was only in her thirties, while she was already 40.6 years old. She held her hand and looked at her with her mother's kind eyes, which was extremely eerie. But Su Wunyan understood that she is now Shenxingde and must make everything look natural. While washing up, Su Wunyan admired her body, which had not yet grown. Her skin was as smooth and flawless as jade, with no scars on her body. In front of the mirror, with delicate facial features and a chubby face, it looks like a ceramic doll, cute and obedient. Especially in that pair of spiritual and captivating big eyes, there is a set of black after the sedimentation of the Milky Way, and in the blink of an eye, the Milky Way shines brightly. 
thank you for the support of our ancestors, isn't it ask for a ticket, go for it, go for it, end of this chapter.